Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll just start the session on uh, sustainable alternatives to single-use plastic. Uh, you know, thank you so much for being here, and welcome on behalf of the CIA Conclave. My name is Siddharth Dula. I lead corporate strategy and enterprise engagement for the Circular Apparel Innovation Factory, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all for the session with the theme: Seeding and Scaling Sustainable Alternatives to Single-Use Plastic. The session today promises to be a very interesting one because we have a combination of a panel discussion with you know, stalwarts for the, from the industry, and you know, thank you, you, you thank them for being here, combined with an innovative short spotlight of interesting innovators from across the country. So before we get into the panel discussion and uh, the innovative spotlight, I'd like to give a small perspective on the issue of plastic packaging waste in the apparel and textile industry in India. Today, India generates almost 26,000 tons of plastic waste on a daily basis. Around 43% of the manufactured plastic in the country is used for packaging purposes. Well, we all know that packaging plays a very key role in protection, marketing and advertising, you know, offline and online retail for clothing. The complete life cycle of this packaging is not thought through at all. Most of the packaging is made out of industrial materials, which are single use, and do not disintegrate in the Earth's natural cycle. Today, we also see that there are no feasible systems that are scaled up to keep them in a closed loop and hence create hazardous waste. And also as CIF, our conversations with key stakeholders in the apparel and textile industry suggest that finding sustainable alternatives to plastic packaging waste is one of the key sustainability agendas for brands and organizations globally, as well as in India. And hence, uh, you know, in order to you know, combat this issue, CF embarked on a journey last year. In an initiative which was led by CF, by ABFRL, Aditya Bidla Fashion and Retail Limited, CF, along with ABFRL, launched the Better Than Plastic Challenge to find new materials and alternate systems that could demonstrate the ability to curb, to curb the environmental impact, as well as be integrated with businesses. How we went about this process was we launched an innovation challenge across the country through, through a wide network of industry bodies, universities, accelerators, as well as packaging enterprises within our network. We asked them to get into an application process on our CIF platform and share in their details about their company as well as the way they manufacture as well as the solutions that they offer. These applications were then showcased to a jury which comprised of representatives from leading global brands and organizations such as H&M, Avishkar Capital, ABFRL, Fashion for Good, SI School of Packaging, as well as House Vanita Dukre. As a result, we are fortunate to arrive at certain solution directions, as well as relevant enterprises that we felt were on the cutting edge of finding solutions to combat the issue of plastic packaging waste. As an initial next step, as CF, we will uh, you know, conduct a prototype and pilot you know, for some of the innovators, which will be based on the strategic alignment with ABFRL's brand teams. And the learnings from this will be disseminated to the industry in general. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to just share some of the learnings with you all. As some of the key outcomes from this challenge, we realized that today in India, we have several enterprises which are capable of combating the issue of single-use plastic waste, and they require support from the industry in terms of either strategic partnerships or investments. But the solution directions are largely too broad. One is alternative materials to single-use plastic, which could be a combination of you know, different substances like let's say you know, PLA or PDAT, or biodegradable solutions which biodegrade not natural nature, or even new materials technology which come out from the research hotbeds of India, such as the Indian Institute of Technology. At the same time, we've also been fortunate to find some interesting integrated closed loop solution providers or EPRs, which are now mandated by the government of India. And hence, the reason for the session is with a very clear objective, the fact that we've been fortunate to have you know, stakeholders like y'all from the industry in the room. We do realize that while the packaging challenge that we ran was at an India level, but at the same time, it's also very crucial for us to build awareness around material innovations and alternative systems in sustainable plastic packaging. 
understand the outlook brands have as well as solutions being adopted to replace single use plastic understand key challenges being faced by stakeholders while adopting sustainable packaging and understanding the global outlook donor organizations have around this issue and hopefully we can in the end of this entire conversation solve for the question whether there is a requirement for sustainable alternatives purely or is it going to be a combination of sustainable alternatives as well as collection and recycling mechanisms to sort for the issue of single use plastic on behalf of cf interdecap and the avishka group i'd like to welcome our panelists for the session our panel today comprises of industry leaders from the sustainability and impact world we have with us mr sorbindu malhotra country head textile and manufacturing for idh mr ulrika northwell bag strategy lead circular economy for chennai HM. mr padmakar pandey general manager sustainability abfr mr rohan batra head sustainability and csr for housing and urban and mr swagatra mohan raj founder and director of infinitive infinitive an organization which enables businesses to transform to a circular model and provide thought leadership on the circular economy in india swagatra has been kind enough to be the moderator for session thank you so much for swagatra and before i hand over to patra i'd also you know like to mention that we have certain innovators in the room who we are into fighting the challenge these innovators include you know alternative material providers such as fabio and green bio blend at the same time eprs such as ed global plus and lucro while these innovators will not be on the panel but we will be showcasing some of their videos and for the audiences if there are any questions you know please feel free to use the chat function to ask you know some of these uh, innovators any questions that you may have have and you know i must say that uh, you know we have shortlisted them from a wide network of enterprises across the country and we are very proud of the work that they do so before we start off with the panel discussion i'd like to just you know showcase an innovative spotlight which is fabio the biggest threat to our world today is the belief is that someone else will save it we started fabio 2 years back with the belief and the passion to be that someone else hello everyone i am sukanya the founder of fabio and we are working on an exact replacement for single use plastics a biopolymer known as pha which can be made from bacteria the only bottleneck in the commercialization of this product is the high production cost and we at fabio have tried to innovate and a process which can bring down the costs substantially talking about our solution we use raw materials which are wastes from different organic industries ranging from beer industry sugar industries to food and beverage industries we treat these wastes through a patented process using 30% less chemicals and water and also generating value added by products which can be an added source of revenue for us the resins that we produce have properties very similar to conventional polypropylene or polyethylene plastics are adaptable with current extrusion and molding facilities and most importantly are home compostable under 90 days which means they do not require any special conditions to degrade and can be degraded in the soil or in marine environments under 90 days thanks to its physical properties our pellets find an application in a lot of areas ranging from textile fibers to flexible packaging including apparel bags and mulch films for agricultural fields we can also go into 3d printing inks as well as micro beads in cosmetics we are currently doing a pilot trials with various companies in india and the world for instance we are working for a replacement for shrink wraps with barilla pasta an italian company we are also working with abin bev which is one of the largest beer beer manufacturers in the world to upscale their brewery by products into our pha resins our team consists of um, myself i head the technology sector of our company and my co-founders anmol and rishab help me with business and operations respectively we have an esteemed mentor board consisting of mentors from iit kanpur and iit bombay so that's about us and we are fabio and we redefine plastic pavitra oh, oti all right 
Um, thank you, Siddharth. I remember to unmute myself. I hope everyone can hear me loud and clear. Um, thank you very much for that warm introduction. And it's quite an honor to be here with such a distinguished panel. Um, everyone in the room, uh, welcome and welcome to our panelists as well. So that has given us some quick context on uh, you know, the innovation challenge that was run and the general issue of single use plastic packaging uh, waste in the textile and apparel industry and the solution directions that are emerging. That was quite interesting. And I love that we started with the innovators, uh, but I think what we're gonna do here over the next hour or so is to throw the spotlight back on our industry experts who are a part of this panel and to hear directly from them on, um, you know, what are the kind of solutions that are being explored? What are some of the challenges uh, as you're exploring these new solutions and how uh, the textile and apparel industry as a whole is looking to tackle this issue of um, single use plastic packaging waste. Um, a quick note to our audience to keep the questions coming. We're not, we might not really wait until the end to uh, highlight your questions to the panelists We'll try and pick them up in the flow of the conversation. And we will also be handing over to Siddharth uh, in between uh, to show us more uh, innovator videos. All right, uh, with that, I would like to dive straight in. Um, I think the very sort of first question I have for our panelists is, you know, what are some of the key solutions that you as industry pioneers um, are exploring to tackle the issue of single use plastics in packaging. Um, but Makar, may, maybe begin with you. Uh, thank you, Pavitra. And uh, thank you, Siddharth. <clears throat> so uh, I will not directly jump to the uh, plastic. I would say uh, it's, it's a long journey for Aditya Villa Fashion and Retail Limited to handle the packaging. <clears throat> and that's why in 2014, uh, under our re-earth mission, which is sustainability mission, we launch packaging as a mission uh, to tackle, uh, to see this as a whole, uh, as a challenge, rather than looking into that plastic. And then I will come to uh, plastic later. So uh, in 2014, first we uh, came up with this problem that how much packaging we are using and where this packaging is going. And then and keeping in mind that anything which can be measured, that can also be improved. So we started finding out some kind of measurement mechanism, some kind of uh, identification mechanism, because problem with us that we had a huge brand portfolio. Again, within brand, there are different kind of product category and each product category has a different kind of uh, packaging materials. So first we started uh, finding out what kind of packaging material we are using and then is there any scope for improvement at that level. And we realized the, we, uh, at that time, uh, we realized that we used to uh, have uh, six kind of packaging material which predominantly textile, paper, plastic, foam, metal and wood kind of thing. After that, uh, uh, then we thought that uh, some kind of uh, optimization required uh, in, in that part. And then we started taking small, small steps to uh, improve that uh, packaging performance. So first objective was to reduce or optimize as much as possible. Then second step we have taken that whatever plastic even or whatever packaging material is used within brand, irrespective of uh, whether it's uh, men's wear or in, even, even in men's wear itself, there are three, four brand in India for it. So can we standardize those kind of plastic packaging material? And third option we have taken, can we reuse some kind of packaging material? And then last option comes, can we replace uh, any kind of uh, polluted material? So as of now, if I see uh, today, as a ABFR, a last financial year has used 10,000 ton packaging material. And out of that 1,300 uh, ton is uh, plastic only, approximate 100 ton and above we are using that plastic. Only. So within this 2014-15 uh, to 2020 journey, we have taken a lot of initiatives to improve our packaging performance. So for example, I will take one example. All that is store, uh, earlier we used to have a plastic carry bag, now we move completely towards paper bag. So one step we have taken. Within our warehouse to uh, retail store, are within warehouse to manufacturing unit and warehouse transition. We used to have lot of cotton box. 
Now we make it circular. We move towards plastic carton bags, and in one year we take uh, we save more than uh, seventy ton uh, plastic material kind of thing. Coming to this plastic part, also we uh, we notice that a lot of different kind of plastic material is used in the system. Somewhere PVC is used, somewhere uh, uh, your uh, LDP is used, SDP, those kind of. So then we started using a plastic score card, which is basically. Uh, Uh, used by uh, developed by clean technology it talks about which plastic is more sustainable so it's not uh, completely sustainable but in they put into a grade c grade b grade and a grade kind of thing and if you look into this biodegradable it falls into a plus grade so based on that then we uh, discuss with some uh, consultant find out how we can replace without compromising on the quality of quality and aesthetics of plastic from worst pvc towards uh, good quality of uh, ldp and sdp so plastic as of now i would say only in our system 13% is a plastic apart from that we had moved completely uh, uh, towards sustainable plastic keeping in mind that by 2020 uh, we will move 100% sustainable packaging and that's why last year in association with kf we launched this plastic innovation challenge excellent so yeah. let me just come back to that in a, in a little bit um rohan do you want to uh, tell us about um you know uh, the approach that and is taking with respect to this challenge hi pavitra good afternoon hi hello everyone uh, so uh, and basically house of anita dongri what we have pledged we have pledged by august 2020 that you know our packaging will be completely sustainable so when i say packaging i not only include the plastic packaging that we use that is basically used heavily by the textile sector but uh, i'm also talking about you know the paper bags i'm also talking about the uh, the cartons i'm also talking about the different uh, materials that are used for example a thread that is used for tag hanging a tag you know all these things which are used so we pledged that you know by 2022 uh, house of anita dongre will actually move to completely sustainable alternatives when it comes to packaging so with that uh, motive in mind uh, you know we initially uh, house of anita dongre uh, we were very quick to like you know uh, look into various other options that an alternative to a plastic can be given to us uh with that you know uh, seemingly a bioplastic uh, look very very uh, appealing to us and uh, you know with that intention we quickly changed all our operations from a regular poly plastic bag which is a single use plastic bag into something which is now made manufactured from a bioplastic uh, solution alternative so that happened but you know uh, eventually we also find found out that you know uh, there were some other difficulties which we were facing and now what we are doing is we are slowly slowly moving from uh, bioplastic poly bags uh, to recycled poly bags so you know uh, we have been very experimental during this process uh, this was uh, this is exactly like you know a last 3 years history that i'm talking to you about and with this huge company with this huge orders with the huge number of volumes that we are looking into uh, you know we are very very keen to accept new things or try out new things and with that uh, yes polyester and or eliminating polyester or minimizing its usage is one of our priority uh, that we seriously look into and we are definitely working towards it uh, right now we are exploring partners who can help us recycle the same great thank you rohan um uh, ulrika may i invite you to um you know give us sort of the global perspective you know we've heard from two uh, very leading brands in india uh, you know what's what's happening uh, h&m is is a global brand like what, what's happening there with respect to um you know dealing with the single use plastics in packaging issue Yes. So um, what we have done is that, uh, in general, for not only plastic but for all the packaging, we are actually uh, looking at the fundamental part. And the fundamental part for us is really to reduce all unnecessary and problematic packaging, and in spe- uh, specifically then for plastic. So that is how we have been addressing this. 
So a big focus for us the last year have been to uh, reducing the sing single-use plastic that we are using in total. And to give an example for that, we have um, reduced all the plastic packaging in our, our shopping bags within all the brands <clears throat> are completely reduced now. And we are uh, using paper, uh, FSC certified paper instead. And in order to reduce the amount of paper bags that we are using, we are charging for these bags in many markets to incentivize the customer to not take a new bag every time they are shopping. So that is one example. But if you look at another example, we know that poly bag, for example, is a big issue. Uh, so here we are doing different tests to see how can we reduce poly bags uh, at all? Do we even need them in the supply chain? So we are doing a lot of different tests, how we can reduce them. And if we do need to have poly bags for some type of um, products, we are looking into alternative materials to use. And then we also have a transport hanger that is a big um, uh, packaging. Um, we, we include uh, transport packaging, uh, transport hangers in our packaging assortment, and they are actually standing for 59% of our total plastic package usage. So here we are also looking into options, how we can make them in a reusable model, but also looking into material how we can move away from the current PS plastic that we are using, that we know is not good and that we have committed to phase out to 2023 into more sustainable options. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Ulrika. And you know, thank you so much, Padmakar and Rohan, also, you know, for setting um, us, getting us out on this conversation of you know, how you're tr trying to tackle the issue. Um, let, maybe we can get into some specifics here. And I'd love to hear from um, um, actually, just before that, uh, Sarabindo, if I can invite you to, you know, tell us a little bit about your perspective on uh, single-use plastic packaging and the waste that comes from it. Uh, you know, we've heard from the apparel industry leaders, but uh, what, what are your thoughts just looking at the ecosystem in general, sitting from the position that you sit in? Thanks, uh, Pavi. Uh, greetings to uh, everybody. Uh, th there are a couple of things that we need to uh, keep in mind when uh, we are moving into the stream of uh, packaging and uh, redesigning the packaging. So one is uh, the design for recycling. Uh, for better recyclability, uh, to begin with, we need to ensure the separa separability, uh, cleanliness, labeling, and color considerations. Because some of the countries we work in, especially in the Southeast Asian countries, there is a very limited uh, infrastructure which is available. So basically, uh, we should also ensure that the energy materials cost is not going up while taking care of one aspect. We are not increasing the other. The second most important part of uh, is design for reuse, right? So what is reuse? Huh? We need robust designs uh, where we, we can wash and there's an infrastructure to collect and return. So picking up the, the waste from the waste stream is, is, is not sufficient. And then, uh, of course, we have all esteemed uh, panelists as well as a very learned uh, audience. Uh, the bioplastics is, is not definitely the solution. We all know that by now. So how do we replace uh, the bioplastic? What R&D and innovation is needed? Uh, how can we ensure consistencies and supply at scale? And, and then, of course, how do we replace the with paper? As Ulrika rightly mentioned, H&M uh, being a great sustainability company with some great sustainability strategists working for H&M. Uh, paper packaging requires uh, several times more mass to fulfill the same function as its plastic counterpart. And then we get into a debate of whether plastic is a boon or a bane. So these are, these are several considerations while redesigning the packaging we must uh, bear in mind. Uh, thank you so much, Sorabindo. And I, I mean, um, just, you know, from where I sit and, you know, having been a fan of the circular economy concept, like say five or six years ago to working, um, you know, in the space now and, hearing from so many experts, the one shift that I have seen is, you know, this 
this movement from, okay, let's quickly replace this with that to let's look at this as systemic change. And you know, you brilliantly brought out some of those focus areas and I'm sure they're gonna keep coming up through the rest of our conversation as well. So thank you for doing that. And especially for mentioning the whole, um, you know, this, this concept of unintended consequences, right? You look at it systemically, yeah. you don't do, you don't change one part of the system and create issues, you know, down the line. Um, or upstream, right, wherever. So thank you for bringing that up and I hope we'll get to talk about it a little more in the rest of the conversation. Um, so just narrowing down focus a little bit to, uh, you know, there are clearly many ways of uh, dealing with the issue, but when you're looking at sustainable alternatives, what I'd love to do here is, uh, you know, ask, um, um, ask a little bit about, you know, what are the challenges when you're looking at replacing plastic with these sustainable alternatives? Um, and uh, may I have uh, Rohan to kick off this part of the conversation? Thank you, uh, see, uh, it's a great question that, you know, uh, you have to look into something which is a sustainable option when it comes to a poly bag. Okay? Uh, but, you know, what happens is uh, a poly bag, uh, if you are changing uh, the entire style which has been carried on from years in your, in your company, uh, there are many factors that kick in. For example, you know, will this bio poly bag will be like, you know, uh, suitable for a transportation material and will it carry the material properly to its destination? Will it be able to like, you know, handle the hazardousness when, it, uh, when it's in transit? Uh, will it be possible for this bio, uh, bio bag to like, you know, scan the barcode scanners? So these are very small limiting factors which, you know, do... Uh, land up a hiccup in between of adopting new materials. Uh, however, uh, you know what, one can definitely look at these materials. These are not something that are like, you know, that cannot be experimented with. But one has to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, when a company goes into something new, a new alternative or a new product, it has to take care of all the small little items which might create some impediment coming down the road. So when we, in fact, you know, when we changed from a normal poly bag to a bio poly bag, these were some of the issues which were coming up. For example, you know, the normal bio poly bag, it's milky. It's not, it's translucent. It's not transparent. But then, you know, the problem is if you are dealing with e-commerce, how do you scan your product? Because your tags are inside the poly bag. They are not outside the poly bag. So you see, uh, the... The, then, you know, for us, shifting to a normal poly bag was again an option because, you know, we couldn't, uh, we cannot like change material and sacrifice the ongoing business of the company, right? That cannot be done. It has the profitability. It has to be a triple bottom line approach where profitability goes along with planet and people. So then, you know, then again, the hunt of new substance started and then, you know, again, measures for like, you know, how we could do better, how we could turn it into a circular option. All these things started coming in, you know, brainstormings happened. And then, you know, uh, finally, what we thought is like, what if we use recycled poly bags, but what if they are collected at the end of the journey and again, recycled? Say this continuous circulation of this poly bag, will that be a possibility? And, you know, exactly with these thoughts, finally, then, you know, something concrete started happening. We started meeting vendors. We started having conversations. I would say that for my company, it did not, the bioplastic did not fare very well. It could be a different approach for some other options for other corporations. But for us, you know, this circularity with recycled poly bag was something that, you know, is playing favorable role. So this is something that I would like to point out. Thank you, Rohan. Some great points there on the trade-offs and, you know, keeping very much the business focus while you're looking for these sustainable solutions. Um, and, and I think what the circular economy conversation has managed to do is bridge some of those business and sustainability issues better than we've managed to do in the past few decades. Um, Ulrika, may I invite you to, you know, share sort of your experiences on this? Uh, you know, have they been similar to A and B or, um, you know, they've said a recycled polybag is what works um, best for them at the moment. But, you know, what have uh, h and experiences been? I mean, what we have done is that on a group uh, on, on a group goal, we have to have 100% uh, recycled or other sustainable source material, regardless if you are designing a garment or a packaging or interior. So that is what we have done. And if you look more what we have done in the packaging field, 
we have said first of all that we should have a preference and this goes for all the material not um, also the commercial but that we should have a preference for recycled content and to uh, to really look uh, as a sub goal to this for packaging we have said that latest 2025 25 percent of our plastic packaging should be uh, containing um, re post recycled content and uh, i mean why we are doing this is that we need to keep the material uh, in the loop as long as possible and that goes into therefore we need to look into what materials are good and if you take plastic for example we know that some uh, polymers they are they could be good in one one part of the value chain but they are not uh, able to be looped over and over again and they can be very uh, contain um, uh, hazardous chemicals and so on so what we have done is that already 2009 we phased out pvc in all our packaging as i said before we have detected ps to be a polymer that is not uh, good for the environment and not for the uh, people working with it either so therefore, we set a commitment to phase that out for 2023 in the packaging. Uh, and then we're looking into options because I said, as I said before, when changing to plastic, we know as of today at least, the most, uh, the most current material that you are using if you're using a single use is paper. And therefore, we need to make sure that the paper we're using as much as possible comes from recycled. But this is very difficult because in some markets it's easier to get hold of the quantity that we require, but also the quality that we require to protect the core uh, product. So I mean, here we also face challenges with recycled content and also to assure, uh, to have a verification, what does this recycled content contain? Right. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Ulrika. And, and, and you know what you've said about uh, the, the context varying so much geographically and the availability of the materials and being able to uh, get certified sort of qualified material and able to trust that is, is quite challenging as you explore that shift away from plastics. Um, may I uh, invite Padmakar to uh, comment on uh, any of the challenges uh, you are facing in the space and after that, um, so that I'll, I'll think I'll hand over to you for an innovative video. So uh, Padmakar, uh, do, you, do you want to share some thoughts on how your experiences with this? Sure, Pavitra. And in fact, uh, we have noticed a lot of challenges in uh, sustainable plastic itself. In fact, we started this project long back in 2015-16 and we came up uh, those kind of issues what Rohan has mentioned that uh, we need some kind of packaging material or plastic material uh, which is uh, transparent in manner, barcode and other things can be uh, scanned from outside. So uh, uh, after that, then we dropped that idea. However, in last two, three years, uh, we met a lot of innovators and uh, some of the challenges, which is still, we are not able to tackle it. First is that cost. In fact, uh, any kind of sustainable plastic cost will be 1.5 to two times higher than normal plastic. And in this cost competitive scenario, none of that retail business is very keen to put that much cost. Even after putting that cost also, it is going to landfill. We are not, we are not able to ensure 100% that if consumer is taking that plastic and if it is, whether he is throwing or not throwing, maybe uh, tier one and tier two cities is still possible, but think about because we had a wide reach even at the villages level also what they are doing with those plastic now third uh, challenge uh, came is that whether this bioplastic which is really biodegradable biocompostable and we could not have a very clear answer on that part so uh, maybe uh, and there is no proper standard convincing standard in india as well uh, so uh, uh, if you see that uh, most of that uh, bioplastics, it is written that is industrial compostable. It's not a home compostable. So I'm not uh, I'm not saying that it is uh, only one side. There are other side also where it's hundred percent biodegradable. Lot of options is there, but people are confused in it. Apart from that, I don't think that uh, uh, as a munis uh, municipality is gear up to segregate those kind of plastic because it bioplastic you are incinerating similar to your. Uh, 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 like plastic, or if you are not able to segregate at source, probably then it's again going to be a challenge. Apart from that, single-use plastic definition itself is a challenge. Probably till last year, I'm sure that government has a no clarification on which is 
which will fall under single use plastic so this bioplastic also whether will fall into uh, single use plastic or not fall into i think those kind of regulatory clearance is also required before uh, uh, using into that system and because of these issue we are uh, a little bit slow in adopting any kind of uh, issue and apart from that even uh, uh, through various sources i came to know that even if bioplastic goes into that landfill it, it creates more kind of your ghg emissions it's creating a, a more problem so i think keeping in these uh, uh, points into mind uh, that's why we thought we through a kf innovation better than plastic challenge probably we will come out some different kind of alternative solution which may uh, work in future so that's from my side thank you for sharing that padma i think very vital points on you know definitions and data and to dispel some of the confusion around what to use instead um i think this is a nice time to take a very uh, quick break for siddharth to play us some uh, to to showcase another innovator for us uh, thank you for that tony uh, in fact very interestingly you know sorbin did mention that uh, to uh, to tackle the problem of plastic packaging waste or plastic waste in general we require system level shift and uh, you know also taking a cue from mr parmakar's points that uh, uh, you know a lot of these materials you know end up in landfills and don't uh, biodegrade and the next innovator that we have ab group group plus it deals with these issues essentially it collects recycles uh, and uh, works with the epr policy that the government of india has data so i'll just play the innovator video Good afternoon friends. Thank you for this opportunity to present our solution to the better than plastic panel. My name is Pranav Khanna and I am here today with Akhilesh Bhargav for AVI Global Plast. We are in the midst of a pandemic and in spite of all the challenges we have the opportunity to build back better. Hence circular economy. AVI Global has been in the business of packaging solutions since 1995. specifically focused on sustainable packaging since 2012 we offer products ranging from garment packaging material accessory packaging trays punets amongst others last year we recycled around 111 million pet bottles into pet flakes and successfully converted them back into new packaging material so what are we solving today i love shopping responsibly however we all agree presentation is key Everybody loves a nicely packed garment. Example, a stand packed shirt. But what do you think happens to all of those butterflies, all of that packaging material, the collar putty, the poly bag? If we do not take care of it and segregate it, it all ends up in the environment. What is the solution? We remove the packaging materials like the collar band, the stays, the collar butterflies before handing over the garments to the consumer. You are already leaving the hanger at the retail shop. you would be better served leaving all of the packaging material too this packaging material is then collected by nepra who is our partner in enabling circular economy nepra transfers this to avi global who then recycles all of this packaging back into new packaging materials but why should you be interested there is the statutory epr compliance that we help you with we also help brands communicate responsibility by building a circular supply chain and i'm sure you would have recognized the business model the loyalty programs enabled by circularity that can be built on this for the retailer and the consumer we enable a lower environment footprint by returning of packaging material at the point of purchase and there is of course the loyalty program benefits provided by the brand as an incentive to participate in recycling Needless to say my solution provides for digital traceability and an audited compliance trail So how do we scale this up Well we are already infrastructure ready in 10 cities and we intend to recycle packaging worth 3 million pieces over 4 years I close now with a thank you and an invitation to join us in our journey into a circular economy thank you pavitra thank you sadar um i i love the structure of this panel because usually we we get to talk about all the challenges first and then you know at the very end we are like okay so what are the solutions but 
um, I think the Innovator Showcase is sort of helping us keep a lot of optimism alive as we're you know, looking at the solutions um, while parallelly also diving deeper into the challenges. Um, so thanks to that for that. And uh, back to our panelists. Um, you know, I think uh, you've, you've, you've definitely pointed out that uh, the, the downstream part of it, right, which is the, the collecting back and recycling uh, plays as important a role, at least in the current uh, way the systems are set up. Um, and, and, I, and I love, um, you know, the innovative video that we just saw, which talked about the point of purchase being the point of return of the packaging as well. That's pretty crucial, especially when you're trying to look at the economics and the infrastructure of collecting back packaging. So can I get our panelists thoughts, uh, you know, maybe we'll, um, you know, begin with you, Rika, on, you know, with, with that downstream part on, on collecting back and recycling, what are some of the challenges there and, you know, how are you looking to address them? With the recycling issue, you mean? Yes. Yes. I mean, I think, first of all, it's uh, challenging to be uh, present at 74th Market because what that means is that what we are doing I think it was Rohan who said it. Oh, not Rohan. It was, oh, I'm sorry. But somebody in the panel, I'm really sorry. I'm bad at names, said that it all starts with the design. And I definitely agree. Because what the decisions we take in already the design phase will actually determine how the packaging will be handled in the end. And for us, it means that we need to take into consideration how the packaging will be handled in the end at 74 mark. So that is a bit challenging. So first of all, we need to look uh, general on, uh, on design guidelines that will uh, enable our designers, product uh, developers and buyers to do the right choices when dealing with the design, but also with the material choice. But then we also need to look at, is this recyclable at scale or not? And then we need to look at all the markets. And I mean, like you said, not all markets actually have recycling infrastructure today. So that is also a challenge. And I think that, uh, so I don't have a good answer to you what we are doing with the, to, to, with the recycling. I mean, what we are doing to mitigate this is to do the right choices in the design phase. Right. But then we need to understand how, how, the, how all the infrastructure at 74 market look like. And that is, a, that is a big challenge, I must be honest to say. Uh, so we need to uh, start better looking at it, but also I think that we need to, we need to work with uh, external parties, like the uh, recycling uh, community, for example, to meet this. Right. Thank you, Ulrika. And uh, Sarabindo, I think, uh, you know, um, this will be a great time to bring you in here because you've got, uh, you know, a, a perspective on the ecosystem that, that extends beyond the apparel industry as well. And, you know, what are you seeing as uh, some of the challenges with recycling the pa uh, packaging waste and as it stands in India today? And what might be some ways to address that? Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Pavi. I think some interesting uh, points uh, brought forth by Ulrika. Uh, one is from the bags perspective and the other, of course, is from the general plastic perspective if we consider uh, within the domain of India. Uh, for, for India, I think it's uh, one thing which uh, uh, Padmakar highlighted. There, there's a ch challenge of meeting the compliances. So we did a survey of 100 companies uh, in the month of, uh, after the new EPR uh, extended producer responsibility guidelines came in uh, June, 2020. And, uh, and, and we met them in person. We met them uh, as, a, as, 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 as a, in conference together. And, and, and what, what we found was that there is, there, there is a complexity of guidelines between different actors within the Indian landscape, which makes it very difficult for them to understand. So we have a sustainability head in an ex company and he or she is having so many other functions. And the last thing they want is to fulfill the EPR responsibility and they act on it only when a notice comes from the Apex in, uh, uh, company. Coming back to Ulrika, what are the challenges which h &M might face in India in their retail or any global retailer may face in India? Uh, it's, uh, it's the complexity of source segregation. It's a complexity of uh, affordable and, 
and commercial technology which is not there which 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 is also at the global uh, level and then of course there is an absence of uh, transparent handling of service provider you know papers can be made papers could be fraud and and then uh, we, we don't have access to the recycled good quality plastic as well the way we did it in cotton was one example and and there's lack of information as mr padmakar said for the alternatives which is available it's 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 quite uh, quite difficult to get the right information due to lack of technical know how and and constantly evolving technology right thank you and um padmakar do you want to add on to uh, you know some of um, these challenges at uh, you know in the downstream parts and what you might be doing to tackle them or potentially looking at doing to tackle them yeah sure pavitra so in fact uh, uh, that downstream i think collection uh, see in india i think that robust infrastructure is still not available so maybe uh, it is limited to either tier 1 or maximum of two tier 2 city but if you see that waste <coughs> as a problem for even tier 4 cities also or very smaller cities also this this waste this problem is everywhere so i don't think that much robust infrastructure is there and in fact we did uh, one pilot project which was that zero waste store pilot in bangalore itself where we had covered 100 our stores and uh, uh, we collected uh, not only plastic we collected all kind of packaging material whether it's paper textile and all those things we we bring back it into our system and then uh, we recycle and if possible reuse it also and uh, in fact uh, uh, 64 ton kind of waste we had collected but to our surprise that this business model was not affordable at all not viable at all and cost was so extremely high that it is always in business perspective it is always better to go as a, a virgin material rather than going into collecting that material recycling and reusing it so uh, uh, that was our experience i think lot of work is happening in india towards this uh, part i am i am sure as epr regulation is coming and brand is also being uh, make responsible for that because earlier it was i think limited to producer but this time in new notification epr brands also making uh, make responsible so i think lot of momentum uh, will come into that space but still i feel it, it, there are a lot of challenges in in that recycling and collection part thank you for that and and i and i know both sarbindo and uh, padmakar you brought up epr I'm, i'm i'm trying to veer away from the temptation of getting into epr because that's a whole 3 hour conversation in itself especially with the new amendments that have come in um rohan any further comments on the recycling aspects i think uh, you know we've covered quite a few of them is there anything additional that you're seeing see uh, when it comes to recycling of the poly bag uh, at the downstream level the retail end the biggest part is not the collection for us or it's not the segregation because you know what happens is we normally hand out the final garment in a paper bag right and the poly bag that we use is from our warehouse to the store so it gets collected back at the store so then you know it's with us we don't have to segregate it or we don't have to like you know collect it because all the stores again they send all their materials back to us so it comes back to us the only problem is like you know what we face is that you know if india could have more of these industrial composters or like you know if they could have more such agencies which get into recycling <laughs> for example you know right now because of kf and we really thanks siddharth over here because of his help we met lucro so lucro's facility is based in gujarat but imagine that you know all all the 29 states of ours where you know we have a retail presence we have retail presence across 1200 uh, retail touch points collecting all those poly bags shipping it back to gujarat you know this makes it a bigger challenging point for us because already this poly bag is something that you are investing it and it still is creating a lot of mess in the environment right so what you need to do next is you need to collect it if you know you could have like such more vendors or if you could have such more facilities which helps you in recycling that's the biggest concern that we were facing earlier uh, so you know i would like to just digress the topic a little but you know for bioplastics when it comes over there so what could really work if there could be more industrial composting com- as in composters for example you know again we had uh, we met with one of the ngos stream mukti which had these composting units 
but imagine now you know if i'm standing in a tier one city in a mall i can't put a composter outside my uh, shop because that's real estate imagine then collecting all these bioplastics back and then if there could be a solution which is locally available where you know these uh, bioplastics could be composted off and sent back to because you know these are not your garden grade bioplastics these are one plastics which get composted in an industrial composting unit so you know these are the challenges that we face downstream so for recycling because of the because we partnered with one of the vendors uh, with cif med mediation we've come across the supply chain i think supply chain has to be really strong part of this entire activity you cannot do it it's india is completely fragmented it's huge and it's fragmented you can't do anything if you don't have good supply chain if you want to collect it segregate it even if you say recyclers your rag pickers even they are like you know very few they are very less they don't have a complete supply chain there needs to be an end to end facility which needs to be given at downstream so that's right. the point that i want to do next and thank you for bringing that up uh, rohan and i think that also um, you know ties into one of the questions that's coming in from our participants um you know and i think you also mentioned uh, stream of the sangatna if i remember uh, correctly they work with the informal sector a lot right they work yes. with uh, yes. the okay the question from our audience is uh, when it comes to working with recyclers large part of it is the informal sector in india right. how do you see this being addressed and do brands need to come together for this i think i'm going to so, add another layer to this question um how much of addressing does this need right So do you need to make it from the informal to the formal sector or what are, what are some other approaches that you see happening here see you know i actually feel that india does not treat waste as it should treat people say waste is the next coal i mean you say i've never seen a nasdaq listed company coming in waste management or if there is i'm not aware of one i don't know why it still remains informal i i really want to understand we work with stream mukti sangathan and you know the 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 basic work that we give in mumbai is like you know for those rag pickers to basically segregate so right now we are engaging with them so that you know they can segregate the textile chindi the waste into polyester chindi and the uh, cellulose chindi which is the man made cellulose fiber chindi so you know then those polyester chindis is disposed of properly in different manner and cellulose one if you know even if you put it in your garden within 8 to 10 months because it's cellulose and organic it gets uh, completely biodegraded but you know that's what informal informality is i mean to say this organization is so small these recyclers are so small you won't find them in another state what if you want to copy this model in say delhi or say bangalore say maybe orissa jammu you don't have or if you might have to find you might have to find but if you want to say uh, is there an hm store nearby yes there is it's there on google maps why is this uh, industry still an informal sector i am still very confused but you know i'm very happy if somebody could answer that uh, and we would love to work with them because you know we are working with many of these ngos right now and you know it would be really good because uh, you know it's not one man's job to like you know segregate and this will definitely also give many jobs which will also you know be a good circular job uh, bro so yeah thank that's you. thank you for sharing that i can see you feel quite passionately about this um and uh, can i can i invite some of our other panelists to comment on that question from the audience about the informal sector and what we might um uh, you know do do about uh, in involvement of the informal sector in recycling so uh, 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 petra what i feel is that going forward i think it is coming up as a uh, kind of business model uh, and uh, people are uh, looking into some kind of business opportunity so and apart from that uh, regulatory landscape is also uh, keep changing and lot of pressure is coming uh, so uh, probably a uh, lot of things will improve and apart from that i think it requires some kind of collaboration uh, public private partnership or government and corporate partnership kind of to develop some kind of infrastructure for example fmcg they had uh, created some kind of pool and uh, where that all fmcg company they will contribute uh, to establish a particular uh, collection center and uh, processing center so i think industry as a whole uh, we need to uh, i think uh, collaborate and, and bring out some kind of solution and i think epr is also in that direction even either you take responsibility otherwise government will penalize you and then it will uh, uh, develop infrastructure in that way however it is limited to only 
uh, plastic and electronic waste, but I think it should cover most of the other things where that most waste stream is getting generated. Right. Thank you for that. And in fact, I think what I heard on one of the recent other discussions is that, you know, at the moment we're looking at collection channels for plastic separately and then e-waste separately. And then there's talk of, should we be doing this for textiles? But how do you integrate all of that is also a question uh, that's coming up. Um, but Padmakar, you mentioned collaboration. And I think that brings me uh, very nicely to the next question, which is, how do you get industry or how, how do you as industry collaborate uh, to accelerate some of these movements that we're already starting to see? And, um, you know, Sarabindo, do you want to comment on this first? You know, uh, clearly from your role, uh, you've done a lot of work in bringing together big industry players and the rest of the ecosystem for initiatives, say like the Better Cotton Initiative. Um, you know, what might be some of the approaches and some of the... Um, learnings from there that we could also use in the plastics packaging space. Thanks, Mavi. A great, uh, a great time to bring, bring this in. Uh, when I look at uh, the geographical landscape in Southeast Asia or India, uh, and, and as Padmakar mentioned, the, the cost uh, is, is a major factor and sustainability is a cost for some companies, uh, while for others it is, it is not. Uh, so collaborate for optimizing the cost yeah control the risk, and while at the same time, innovate for the technology. A collaboration for greater harmonization is, is important. So if, if let's say a Nestle is uh, doing uh, an MLP packaging and change towards that, is PNG doing the same? Or are they harmonized in their approach? Uh, is, is there a facilitation for doing that? Is there a platform for doing that? When they sit together with the automobile makers, when they sit together with the, the, the beetle nut manufacturers? Or is there a collaboration in under, undertaking innovation? Is, are there sufficient funds available for innovation? And is it sufficient for one company to invest in uh, innovation? Our surveys show that th there are quite a few of uh, multinational companies uh, which are willing to fund, but to a limit. What, what happens to the domestic retailers and domestic brands who, who have a multinational ambition? And then the solution that IDH offers is we always, when we start, we collaborate by setting up an impact investment fund. Those, those funds which can be scaled up, uh, the funds where we engage, we align, we scale, we co-invest one in four with, within those funds. And, 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 and then we innovate together with the companies. As a convener, we work with them. So one example is a Better Cotton Initiative, uh, which is globally known. Aditya Birla is, a, uh, is, is part of it. H&M is a great part of uh, it. And so are uh, more than 100 companies sourcing. So one thing which we realized uh, through, through this uh, uh, initiative, one of the key learnings from, uh, from uh, this particular initiative for us was that if, if you get all the stakeholders in, in one room together, it is, it, is, uh, it is always difficult. Gaining acceptance is always difficult for different stakeholders. And one thing which we did for greater adoption for scale in Better Cotton was that we got it at the market price. So Better Cotton was available at the market price and it was available through the year. So if I get good recycled quality plastic at scale all through the year, fulfilling the EPR, I have in control the innovation. I have in control the diversion from landfills. I can have an education and inspired uh, consumers. I have scale and innovation for design. Then we can do it. But then there has to be an actor that binds all the multi-layered stakeholders together in one chain, the way we have done in BCI. And that's where the IDH uh, comes in play globally for various programs that we lead. And, and, and definitely, yes, we are looking at making an entry into the plastic sector in India. We have been uh, uh, doing some soft uh, work to gauge the market. And uh, what I hear, uh, fortunately for us, is all, all uh, what is reflected in the outcome. This, uh, this research is being led by KPMG for us for the last four months. And yes, we, we will uh, get to know more and uh, you will get to hear more from us, especially the apparel brands and retailers. 
in a while from now. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, Sarabindo. Um, and I, I love that you mentioned scale, right? Because, uh, and I'm sure Siddharth will agree with me on this, when you talk to the innovators and the brands, it's always who is solving for the scale issue. It's, it's like you know, the chicken or the egg. Like, you know, that's the problem, but how do you get together to solve it? That always comes up and it's uh, great to see what uh, BCI has already done and that we might look to emulate some of that with plastic uh, packaging as well. Um, Ulrika, over to you to comment on the collaboration, uh, collaboration part. Um, you know, you are obviously working with a lot of industry bodies and associations to champion several causes, including that of um, reducing plastic pollution. Uh, do you want to share with us a little bit about what you're doing? And then after that, over to Siddharth for an innovative video. Yes, I can only agree with the previous speaker. I think the only way forward is to collaborate. We need to collaborate. If I take our company, for example, we are a matrix company with 180,000 employees worldwide. And we need to, first of all, we need to collaborate internally to have cross, uh, across uh, organizational networks, but we also need to collaborate with other parts. And yes, you're right. We do this uh, through uh, committing to initiative. And I think this is very important because when you're committed to an initiative, you also need to um, uh, deliver a result, right? So, I mean, for example, the new plastics economy that we have committed to say that by 2025, at least 25% of our, um, uh, we should have reduced at least 25% of our plastic packaging. And this means that we annually, we are uh, measuring this. Uh, so, and, uh, and I mean, this will be the only way forward to measure this and to start, uh, and also by uh, engaging in different initiatives, we get together brands having the same problem and other parts of the industry having the same problem. And I think also this would be an opener to start uh, working on projects that actually could be scaled. Because that is also important. We can do innovations, but to be honest, innovations need to be able to be scaled if they will make a result. So this is how we are doing. And to just give you one example, how we have engaged with uh, um, an external part party is when we were uh, when we were looking at our e-commerce program, for example. We know that we had eight brands, and they had different type of um, uh, packaging, e-commerce packaging. And we wanted to consolidate this and to slim this in the best possible way. And there we started to engage with this uh, external design firm called IDEO to do this. Mm -hmm. And this has now resulted in, and in, um, I think it's only one year, this has resulted in us changing for the, um, uh, the assortment in e-commerce packaging. So we have a unified, and I saw a question here from one in the audience asking, do we need to brand all the packaging? I think branding is good, but you can do that in a smart way so that you can use a generic packaging. And this is one example how we engage with other parts of the industry to see how we can, uh, how we can be better in um, uh, designing and procuring our uh, packaging. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ulrika, and also addressing one of the audience questions that we haven't had a chance to address yet. Uh, Siddharth, over to you for one of the innovative videos. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, in fact, taking a cue from Ulrika's point about scalable, innovative packing solutions. So I'm going to play the video for Green Bio Blend. Uh, we have the founder, Mr. Ali Asghar Gora, also you know, with us uh, uh, in the room. Uh, where they mentioned they've created a compostable solution, which is biodegradable under natural conditions and is scalable in terms of production as well. Green Bio Blend, a product by Sunny Enterprises. Sunny Enterprises is one of the pioneers in the field of manufacturing certified compostable resin blends compounds with brand name Green BioBlend. All our products are ISO 17088 certified and approved by the Central Pollution Control Board. A state-of-the-art manufacturing unit is located at Baramadi District, Pune, making it geographically convenient for Pan-India distribution. It is equipped with highly advanced and reliable processing equipment robust audit system and well-experienced staff, thus ensuring consistent quality and optimum use of raw materials for the effective production that translates into customer cost savings. Solution. All our blends compounds are made from certified and highly reliable compostable raw material, 
They are predominantly a combination of PLA, PBAT and PBS along with additives and minerals like talc and calcium carbonate based on each product application. We have been able to expand our product portfolio to over 35 plus products in short span of time. Thus providing multiple solutions to replace single-use conventional plastic products across industries such as textiles, hospitality, F&B, tourism, aviation and many more. Innovations India's first transparent packaging solution, a breakthrough to replace conventional plastic for FMCG and garment industry. India's first transparent compostable eco-friendly cups glasses. India's first to develop transparent compostable shrink film, another breakthrough in the packaging industry. Amongst the first globally to develop a solution to replace pet bottles by developing compostable preforms. Benefits We have a broad portfolio of compostable blends compounds which can be processed on traditional machinery with minor or no modification required. This would result in a smooth transition from conventional to compostable products. Compared to conventional plastic, our blends compounds require lower heat and energy consumption during processing, thus leading to energy conservation. Achievement We have developed and designed home compostable shopping bags and garbage bags whose decomposition is complemented by the Indian municipal composting conditions and Indian weather conditions. Hence, there is no Did that yeah. video get interrupted or? No, it's fine. It's uh, over to you, Professor. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, very interesting work again. And I think addressing some of the challenges that we've already talked about uh, through the rest of the panel. Um, I'm going to take, um, you know, one of the audience questions, which is also my question. So um, whoever from the audience gave us this question, uh, bear with me <clears throat> while I paraphrase this a little bit. Uh, it, it essentially touches on the consumer angle, right? Uh, you know, as pioneers in the industry, there's a lot of work going on. Innovators are doing a lot of work, but uh, the story isn't quite complete without engaging consumers. And uh, when you're talking about packaging, it, it, it's at multiple levels, right? It's about um, the awareness part of it. Uh, it's also about, am I as the consumer bringing the packaging back for recycling to wherever it's supposed to be recycled? So different touch points, uh, even with the consumer. So how is that angle being addressed? And um, should we go to Ulrika first uh, to give us uh, some perspective on the consumer engagement angle? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it's a very good question because regardless if we are designing and producing the very best circular product, regardless if it's a packaging uh, or a garment or whatever it is, if the customer isn't pleased with this, it will not be good. So we need to engage with the customer to see that they are not throwing this away. Let's say, for example, that we want to do a reusable packaging. Then we need to understand that the customer really will treat this as a reusable packaging as well. So therefore, I think it's very important. And I mean, what we have done, the previous project I mentioned to you about consolidation of the e-commerce program, what we did to engage with the customer there, for example, was to tell the story a bit about the when they get their e-commerce packaging home, we also told the story about the packaging so they know a bit uh, why we're coming from and why we're changing um, uh, how the packaging looks like. But also we gave the customer the opportunity to engage in a small survey so we would understand what was important for the customer and how could we make a packaging better both environmentally but also so it fits the customer. And another example is when we tried this uh, repack, I don't know if you know it, but it's reusable e-commerce packaging. And we did different kind of tests during a period of time where we also tried to see what would incentivize the customer to send the reusable packaging back. So I think it's extremely important to engage the customer in the journey and to educate the customers so they understand how get, they could also take good decisions. Great. Thank you for bringing up those points, both on uh, consumer awareness and incentivizing the consumer and, and the steps taken to understand what would, uh, you know, 
uh, en engage them in more circular behaviors, as I like to start calling them. Um, do do uh, Rohan, Padmakar, uh, Sorabindo, do you want to add on to that about the consumer engagement angle and where you see this going? If I may just take, hello. Yes, hi. <laughs> yeah, uh, if I may just take this opportunity right now to address this. So, you know, uh, currently where uh, we are uh, in touch with a vendor who is actually collecting all our uh, poly bag, which is a transparent poly bag, which is responsible for carrying our garments from our warehouse to the stores safely, right? So these poly bags are then collected at the stores itself. So, you know, uh, it's clearly mentioned on the poly bag also so that, you know, the staff, because, you know, before the consumer comes the staff, that staff is trained and well enough uh, uh, adhering to these responsibilities saying that, you know, uh, this poly bag is made from recycled product. And then, you know, again, uh, if you give back uh, to the vendor again, we will recycle it 100%. So once the staff is knowledgeable about this fact, what he does is he also puts this into the, because, you know, ultimately it's the store staff which educates the customer more so. So then, you know, what happens and again on our e-com poly bag also, which is like, you know, directly from your warehouses to directly to the customer, it's D2C model. Again, over there, we have started mentioning a text saying that, you know, uh, why don't you drop this poly bag at your nearest HOAD, House of Undead over there, retail outlets. We'll ensure that, you know, this gets completely recycled. It's another step towards environment safety. So, you know, these are smaller things where we have started taking smaller initiatives to, uh, like, you know, also communicate to the consumers that, you know, yes, uh, your participation is as much necessary as the brand itself. And then, you know, our uh, promoters have also started putting on social media that we are doing so much. Our poly bags are like this. And, you know, uh, we are recycling it currently. So this way, our social media plays an important role. Your store staff knowledge plays an important role. Your consumer then comes back and then plays another uh, other part of the story. So, you know, all these things, I completely believe that, you know, this cannot happen if the consumer is not right knowledgeable about it. And we have to make sure that, you know, all these things are passed on to the consumer so that it comes back to us and we responsibly dispose of the waste. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Rohan. Uh, Padmakar, uh, do you yeah. want to add on to that? Yeah, I, I think government has already started some kind of con uh, consumer engagement by putting uh, some price and by banning some kind of less than 50 micron kind of plastic uh, 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 putting ban. And... Uh, uh, putting some kind of money so that at least consumer is sensitive when he go to purchase and uh, uh, buy, he don't buy unnecessary plastic. And I, I could see in my store there a lot of trend is happening. People now don't want to buy unnecessary if it, if it is it is not required. And uh, as a responsible brand, we also uh, try to put some kind of effort. And in fact, uh, we try to give minimal uh, waste. Uh, uh, which can be thrown as a landfill uh, to the consumer. We try to remove as much as either poly bag or uh, any kind of U clip, M clip, or any other other kind of material. Until unless it is, it is specifically asked by uh, consumer and to uh, protect that aesthetics and look of, of that product. So uh, uh, those kind of initiatives uh, we have taken. But yes, as such, no uh, robust approach from our side to uh, engage with uh, customer. Uh, that I could uh, say it's not. We uh, uh, there's an interesting anecdote I wish to uh, state here, uh, you know, to make the things a little lighter. So uh, inspiring consumers is very important. I remember 22 years back when I was uh, shopping at an H&M store. Uh, I, I used to work with H&M then, and I, I was I was shopping there, uh, being trained in the store, uh, and. Uh, and I was very proud. I brought those bag, uh, bags back from there and uh, used them very well uh, in, in the city. And then as, as we grew up, uh, you know, shopping from a Harrods or shopping from a, a, a Bottega Veneta store or any of the stores, which means prestige, that those were the inspirational bags that continue to, you know, we used to carry them, our lunch boxes or, or other aspects. Now, we, we have to see that as mass retailers or, or, or mass sellers, how do we inspire the consumer and reimagine our retail bag alternative where it continues to be in the cycle? Last year, I bought some bags from IKEA. Uh, I'm very happy go taking those bags out 
to a to an outlet milk outlet in uh, in delhi to get my milk because I, ikea is an inspirational store for for me from the sustainability perspective we know it's it's it has got mass outreach so so these are also in, uh, important parameters where we inspire consumers as a brand wonderful thank you for sharing that and i think um, you know coming off some of the other panels we uh, when i've talked about consumer behavior um, i think i mean what, what you said sort of in the about me, uh, what is cool to do right so at this point it's like cool uh, can we make it cool to be sustainable and be circular is also one part of the conversation that's happening and which brands and which bags of the brands are we using to sort of showcase that that's very interesting and echo thank you for sharing that um i'm going to uh, request that if we can have one more of the innovator videos sure absolutely thank you so much pavi uh so we have a very interesting epr again uh you know which is doing some really good work in the entire epr space uh, they've been working in the automotive sector as well as in the textile space uh we have mr ujwal desai managing director of lucro i'm going to just uh, you know share snippets of his company as well So Lucro is an Indian recycling company that specializes in difficult to recycle film plastic waste specifically focusing on flexible packaging. Flexible packaging is something that people tend to not recycle because it's very difficult to recycle but we know that there, there is a value that can be driven out of this plastic waste. We try and close the loop from design to manufacturing of packaging. to collecting it after end of life and then recycling it back into the product stream this ensures that we can remove inefficiencies in the system and pay a higher than market price to the person who's collecting this at the ground level reducing the plastic leakage problem so when we started it was only three of us uh, working from a small office and now we have almost 120 people on our payroll now with circulate support we will further grow and scale our business open more collection centers increase the post consumer sourcing even expanding our product portfolio this will help us achieve our vision for becoming a global leader in recycled products thank you so much for being with you thank you sudarth and um, you know just being conscious of time here i'm going to go to one other question from the audience although i have more questions to ask our panelists let's let's bring the audience into the conversation here um you know while what about the life cycle uh, ghg emissions of the plastic alternatives uh, do all the bioplastics and the other alternatives have a lower carbon footprint than conventional plastic and i think i would kind of add on to say um you know how how are you measuring this and approaching this uh while looking for the alternatives I'm not sure which one of our panelists wants to take that but um urika padmakar rohan sorry no, i mean yeah, i I, uh, I can, I can <laughs> sorry uh, yeah, yeah i can talk yeah. Um, i will talk generally about the greenhouse gas emission but not on bioplastic because that is not something that we are uh, working with uh, in particular because of, yeah from different reasons i don't have to go into that but i think it's a very important question because we know that in order to tackle the climate uh, crisis we have circular economy really is a tool that will enable this So, I mean, with everything that we, if we are having a circular business, that means that we need to have a circular supply chain, how it's produced, uh, and how they are taking care of the waste, for example. But we also know that we need to have a circular product, and that goes for the um, design of it. And then, what I was a bit into before, we need to have a circular offer to customer. So, we need to measure these three components in order to assure that the decision we are taking actually is a beneficial. for uh, the emission that we are um, um that we are um, uh, making so i think that was on a very holistic level and not in particular to the uh, bioplastic mm. thank you ulrika uh, i think rohan uh, were you trying to say something or was it padmakar hello hello 
to answer charu this is a very interesting question that you have asked uh, no the the bioplastic doesn't uh, uh, reduce the ghg emission uh, as is popularly the notion it's only that the recyclability the number of times it gets into the recycling gets reduced that's a short and sweet answer for what you are asking <laughs> Uh, no, Pavitra, I will a uh, little bit differ here because bioplastic as per my understanding has a lesser GHG emission as compared to conventional plastic. However, how much it is lesser, it depends on that uh, which kind of material has been used. And I think uh, we have to look into detail and see a study of that entire process. So it cannot be a straightforward yes or no answer. But yes, definitely as per my experience and understanding, it may be wrong also. But JG emission is uh, comparatively low in, than conventional plastic. Right. Thank you. Uh, Sorobindo, I'm really sorry. I think I interrupted you because I was asking you to turn on your video. Do you want to give us that short and sweet answer just one more time? Uh, I think uh, Padmakar uh, did answer this. So the so uh, broad based uh, from from the as a sustainability strategist, I see bioplastic may be a short term solution, but not as a long term uh, solution. Contribution towards the GHG depends on uh, where we are using that as an additive, uh, and of course, as Padmakar rightly mentioned, uh, the life cycle of that. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I lean on what Padmakar is saying and tend to agree with him. But that's not the longer solution. Uh, Pavitra, I'd just like to request, uh, you know, Rohan to add to this because Rohan's had an experience with uh, bioplastics and, you know, also with recycled plastics. So we'd love to get, you know, their experience uh, you know, for the audience here. Yeah, I guess that. Uh, see, uh, when it comes to bioplastic, the major uh, issue that we were facing, and it could be, uh, like, you know, I'm not pointing on the bioplastic. I know they are really good uh, sustainable alternative to a plastic bag. Uh, but what we felt is like, you know, uh, these bioplastic actually require certain conditions to compose. So, you know, they require a certain type of soil, they require that 50 degree of temperature, even inside a composter. And, you know, a, a very simple philosophy in life is the more resources you input, the maximum output you get in terms of waste. All right. So your bioplastic is not made from a single material. It is made from like, you know, there is like 25% uh, bio material. Then there are polymers, then there are additive, then there are combinating materials. So obviously you've got like an array of materials over here. Obviously when this plastic goes on for composting, it will tend to have more GHG emissions and it will have a negative impact on the environment. But when it comes to a normal regular plastic, it's made from complete one material. So recycling it, I know it's not destructible, but you know, recycling it actually tends to give out less GHG. So that's a very simple point because you know, when it comes to composting a bioplastic, it's not that very simple as it sounds because you know, first you need to find a proper composter, you need to find proper atmospheric conditions, or you might have to create a lot. But you know, these are the things that uh, you are looking into in terms of your composter. So there are uh, there are industrial grade composters present in the market. There are these facilities present in the market. Now there are these uh, organizations, NGOs, which have started converting your uh, dustbins, the blue dustbins, which you in composters with you know your uh, black soils and your planes and everything. So you know these are the different things uh, that happen, and that therefore even I agree with Saurabh in that you know. Uh, uh, having a polyester and then recycling it so that you know it enters into recycling and circularity uh, seems a very viable option uh, then rather than jumping onto bioplastic right now unless and until they have a closure or an end to their own supply chain. Thank you Rohan um, and I think bioplastics in itself there's like so much of sort of uh, discussion and debate going on around it uh, too short on this panel and actually coming to the end of this panel uh, to delve deeper into that. So maybe on a concluding note, I could invite all, all our panelists uh, to give us a very quick sort of one line summary on the next steps, right, with respect to single use plastics. I know one line summary is not easy, but I request you to do it for us. Uh, basically, um, where to from here? I think it's important, uh, you know, there's no, no, no one answer there. It has to be a multi-pronged, uh, multi-faceted approach on how, how we engage, align, scale, 
invest, educate, and innovate. So starting with, as Ulrika mentioned, we need to test and scale new designs, engage stakeholders across the value chain, uh, collaborate with policymakers and industry, as again stressed by Ulrika, new designs and value system recovery. Simply something can be recycled. We shouldn't get into that, right? If it's recyclable, then we we are good with it. No, that, that shouldn't be the case. And it's very important that brand should influence to unlock the capital. And we need to create investment funds for having greater investments to be made in this because technology is changing very rapidly. And then uh, replicate and achieve critical mass. Every drop in the ocean counts, but there has to be a factor which gets all these drops together in a bucket and uh, and and make them uh, uh, move like a road roller. Excellent. Thank you, Saurabindo. Um, Ulrika, Padmakar, Rohan, can I invite? Uh, so, uh, Pavit Pavitra, I would say that uh, uh, sustainable material innovation as well as this integrated closed loop solution, both will be working and both will coexist uh, going forward because I don't see uh, any one solution is going to work in India. So probably both will uh, work together. Only in, uh, difference will be there. One may be more and one may be less. So uh, that is my uh, perspective for this single-use plastic industry. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Rohan? Uh, so see, I believe that you know we all started this panel by understanding like how we can do in terms of better plastic and how what's going to be our packaging strategy coming because you know we all represent organizations that need to be uh, rational, sustainable, and also responsible for our environment. So definitely, first point is that you know uh, unless and until uh, our organization completely looks into it and eliminates the harmful effect of plastic. We won't be resting, that's for sure. And secondly, as Saurabindu and Ulrika have already mentioned, we will collaborate because unless and until there is a collaborative effort, uh, we don't see the space moving because, you know, ultimately, uh, I can assure you that, you know, there are very few engineers, scientists who can uh, bring in this innovation and we would be more than happy to have them and implement them so that, you know, we can get better results. Thank you. Yes, and I can say a one liner then. Our packaging strategy that we set back in 2018, really the foundation of that is really to optimize the resources we are using and minimize the carbon footprint that we are using. And that is what we will focus on. We will measure this and we will make sure to reach the goals that we have set there. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for being very brief, actually. Um, I'm now going to hand over back to Siddharth, but just before that, uh, thank you very much to our wonderful panelists and um, the, the wonderful insights that came out of this panel. And I think the one thing that I'm taking away is that need for systemic change. And, um, you know, like Sorbindo said, there's lots of little drops in the bucket, but how do we move them all together and move them all in the same direction, I would add. Um, that's sort of the need of the art. It's wonderful to see movement in that direction already. Um, thank you so much uh, to our audience for asking some very pertinent questions. Uh, and thank you to CIF and Sankalp for putting the session together at, at what is a very critical juncture in this conversation on circularity and plastics. Uh, I'm not sure if most of you have seen this, but there's been a recent call for um, UN treaty on plastic pollution. That's sort of the scale of the, uh, the seriousness of the issue. So very timely to have this conversation. Uh, thank you, Siddharth and the CIF team. Over to you. Uh, thanks, Pavi. Thank on uh, on behalf of the all, all the panelists, uh, it was great uh, conversation we had, and some of the deep insights you provided as well as a as as a strategist. I think uh, it was very informative for me as well. Thank you. Thank you to the fellow panelists. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you so much to all the panelists. Uh, you know, just quickly, there were some very interesting points that came and you know, thank you so much for all of you. Uh, so the three, uh, three or four points that came across, uh, you know, at least for me, uh, you know, on the of CF was the fact that, uh, you know, we do realize that for all the brands and organizations, reducing plastic pollution is a key challenge. And uh, most of uh, the brands have really started by optimizing resources and, you know, working in the best possible manner to reduce the amount of plastic that goes into the packaging. Uh, having said that, there are brands which have tried using, uh, uh, you know, different alternatives for plastic, but uh, there are still concerns in terms of cost, 
uh, you know, the claims that some of these uh, you know sustainable materials make, and there really isn't been a single answer of an alternative to single-use plastic. Uh, there is an importance, or there's a need today for a systematic shift uh, to solve for the issue of packaging, which basically means that if the answer is not really a sustainable alternative, but it would be a systemic shift in terms of an, an alternative, you know, plus a collection and recycling mechanism, which could collect packaging waste and ensure that there's a closed loop that's created. Uh, and lastly, also uh, the fact that there is a requirement for investments. And while we see in India that there are several different innovators out there, but there is a requirement for investments either in uh, you know, aggregated facilities for collection or uh, you know, for alternative materials, which uh, you know, could do with a lot of help from good brands, as well as from you know, investors who are looking at you know, pushing the sector uh, forward. Uh, so thank you so much to all the panelists. Ulrika, thank you so much. I do realize this was your first uh, your panel in India. I hope you enjoyed it with us, but thank you so much. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing your perspective on uh, the kind of work that IDH is doing and uh, you know, the systemic level shifts that uh, you know, an organization like yours could really uh, you know, do to move the sector forward. Uh, you know, Rohan and Mr. Padmakar, thank you so much for giving us a brand perspective. And uh, Pavi, thank you so much for making such an engaging panel discussion. Really appreciate the same. Thank you Thanks, so a lot, Thank Thanks a lot, Siddharth. Thanks a lot, Siddharth, and to CIF. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.